Hey guys, Pete here. Today we're camping around 200 kilometres from Darwin and we're on the old McDonald airstrip. This airstrip was used extensively in World War II and it's now abandoned and you can come and camp here, which we're doing. Now there's no power or water or anything, so we thought this might be a great time to try this salt water emergency lamp. Essentially it's like an FRH except it generates power rather than heat. So what we'll do, we'll go and take a bit of a closer look at this and then when it gets dark tonight, we'll fire it up and we'll see how it goes. Alright, let's take a closer look. Alrighty, let's take a bit of a closer look at this thing. It comes packaged in a pretty flimsy sort of cardboard box, the kind of thing that you would hang on a bit of a hook in a store. Now, it's a little bit deformed because I've had this for quite a while. It was actually sent to me from Survival Storehouse with a few other things to review on my channel, and I kind of misplaced it, but now I've found it again, uh, so we'll be making a video at this time. Now, I will put a link to their website, even though I don't think they sell this particular product anymore. Thanks Survival Storehouse for sending me this. Uh, sorry it's taken me so long to get around to making a video. Anyway, let's have a bit of a closer look. At the top here it states that it is a lighting time of 120 hours. Uh, add water and shake. That's not kind of all of it. Uh, uh, across the bottom it says outdoor emergency lighting tools. Low power consumption, convenient. Add salt and water to light up. And on the rear here states water power emergency salt lamp. The product has no requirements on water quality and water purity uh, and can be used directly with seawater. Now it can also be used with urine in that case as well. Uh, it says on here maximum current 100 milliamps is that. Uh, standby current is 1. I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, salt water ratio 10 grams to 200 grams of water. Uh, maximum power is 0.5 of a watt and lumens is 50 lumens. That seems a fair bit. And um, it has a storage time of 5 to 10 years. So that's a fair range there. Uh, it has a little bit of use tips here. It says non-toxic products, heavy metal pollution, avoid eating, of course, um, and such as contact with eyes, please rinse immediately, so forth and so on. Can be used indoors or outdoors. After filling bag with water, don't turn it upside down. And then you can pour the water out when you don't need it. And then put more water and salt in when you do need it again. And it will continue to operate until the metal parts are exhausted. All right, let's open it up and we'll have a look at the actual item. And there it is there. Little uh, handle to carry it by, or you could put a little bit of a rope around that, hang it around your neck. Uh, it has a little on off switch. We'll just make sure that's in the off position. There you go. And we have the three little LEDs here. Now we also have a little area here where it must uh, let out heat or moisture. And also at the top here, we have a little, uh, what looks like a little filter patch. There's one on each side there. And on the back here, it states the same information here that was written on the carton, but it has a production date here of 2021. So that's well and truly in the five to 10 year range. It has a fill line here, and then it goes about showing the example here. Obviously you mix the, uh, put in the salt and the water, shake it, and then allow it to stand for five to 10 minutes and then turn it on. And then it goes on to say the same information there uh, that was written on the carton. So anyway, that's pretty cool. To open it, all you need to do is open it from the top there. I'll give you a look inside there. Uh, can't take that out. That's all actually still attached to the front uh, of the bag there. So I can't take it out. But have a look inside there. You can see the metal component. That's actually quite thick. Uh, it would be probably about two, two and a half mil thick. So it's a fair hunk of metal in there. So I wonder how many times you can actually uh, reload this thing and get it to work. Can you see that there? Alrighty, as this thing has such a long run time, 120 hours as it's stated, uh, we might as well go ahead and load it with its salt and water. Now it states that it needs around 10 grams of salt. Now I haven't got any way of really measuring that out, but I think it's fairly forgiving on how much salt that it actually needs to operate. Hence, you know, using it with urine and so forth and seawater. So I think, um, yeah, I'll just measure out a spoonful of salt. Now we just got a standard sort of dessert spoon here. 
and we'll just uh, load it up with load it with a full serve of salt if I can get it out all right hang on a sec all right must be a little bit of moisture in our salt or something here that looks about right and of course we have that fill line there So just like an FRH, we'll fill it up to that line. There you go, that seems about right. It's got a, obviously, a closure on the top here, like a sandwich bag or something like that. And then it states to give it just a light jiggle. And obviously i can't lay it down obviously that water is going to pour out so we'll wait about uh, five or ten minutes and then we'll come back and we'll test it and we'll see if it operates after all this time all right it's been around 10 minutes let's just feel if there's any warmth or anything happening in there you know what there's a little bit of warmth i can feel it's not really hot or anything but yeah definitely a little bit of warmth all right let's flick that switch and we'll see if we've got some light Oh, magic. There you go. It does work. After all this time, you know what? I've had this for about three or four years, um, and um, yeah, it still works perfectly. All right, so what we'll do, we will wait till it gets dark, and we'll take it outside, and we'll do some filming outside, and we'll see how much light we actually do get, uh, see if it's any of that 50 lumens that it mentions. All right, we'll wait till it's dark, and we'll take it outside. G'day guys, it's now night time. It's a little bit hard to see obviously without any lights. So I've just got the caravan lights on. Uh, we have a roaring fire and we have pretty much a full moon as well. But anyway, let's try this at night. But before we do that, we'll just turn off the caravan lights uh, just so we can see how much light we've got. All right, so now it's just the light from the moon and the fire. So we'll switch this on and we'll have a look how much light it produces. There you go. Just pointing at me so you can see me. Look, that's fantastic. It does put out a fair bit of light. Now, in a real world situation, essentially you could be cooking here uh, and you will be able to see what you were doing. If you were gonna tie this up in a tent, of course, that would light up the whole tent and that would be fantastic. Uh, essentially, you could tie this around your neck, probably can't see me, uh, but you could tie it around your neck and you could walk around with it that way. You could put it on the ground and it would light up the area. Look, it puts out a fair bit of light. It's, it's actually pretty good. Now, remember, this will give you 120 hours of light the way it is, but if we tip out that salt and water and let it dry out and reload it with salt and water, of course, it will uh, continue to operate whilst it has that metal plate inside, uh, and then it will just continue to go and go. So anyway, that looks fantastic. All right, it's the next day, so we'll just confirm that this thing still works. And it does. Now written on the back of it and also on the back of the uh, packaging, it does state that after filling, do not turn it upside down. And you know what? This thing's likely to tip over. So let's just test it and see what it does when it does tip over. See if it leaks. Yep. A little bit of a leak now that could be just the seal not quite closed yeah so it does have a little bit of a tiny leak through the seal but anyway what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and empty it we'll have a look at that element and we'll see if any of that has corroded uh, all right we'll be right back All right, I've rinsed it out, emptied it, and rinsed it out a couple of times. Let's have a look at this element if we can. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit hard to see. It's all still intact, that's for sure. But you know what? That looks pretty good. Uh, it does have a little bit of a mark on it. But you know what? That's mostly intact. Anyway, uh, that's fantastic. Oh, look, I'll also show that it doesn't work now. Now that there's no salt and water in it. 
Alrighty, what we'll do over the next few weeks, we'll try it a couple more times. We might try it with some different liquids, and we might also leave it on overnight. We'll see if we can show some wear on that metal element. Okay, this thing's been activated a little bit more than just overnight. It's actually been running for 48 hours straight. You do remember that I activated it at Kakadu? Well, that was two days ago, and it's still operating, as you can see. Now, I've opened up the top so you can have a look. You can see it does release a little bit of gas, and I guess that's where those little filter patches there come in. They release that gas, and maybe that seal on the top here isn't... Uh, quite as tight either and it lets that gas out there as well so what we're going to do we're going to actually empty off that water now after 48 hours i would hope that we would see some sort of degradation on that metal element all right so we've just got a little bit of a cup here and we'll just pour out that liquid well a bit chunky that's probably the salt Alrighty, I've cleaned it up as best I could. It did take quite a few rinses and I had to scrub that plate. It actually had some salt crystal sort of embedded on it, uh, but it's probably going to be a little bit hard to see. I might put up a still image uh, that might show it a little bit clearer, but that plate has definitely eroded a little bit. I would say probably about 10 or 15%. The plate is still mostly intact, so it's still got a fair bit of life left in it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely showing that it has eroded a little bit. Okay, after the last test, I've reloaded this with fresh salt and water. You can now see that it's no longer operating. Uh, this morning, it actually switched off and it had been running for four days straight. Now, I've drained off the liquid so you can have a look inside. It's probably a little bit hard to see and I'll probably put an image up so it's a little bit clearer. But you can see where the plate was. Uh, I'm not sure if any of it's left, but you can see it's encased in some sort of salt crystals there. I'll give it a proper clean and we'll see what's left. All right, I've done a fair few rinses and I've cleaned it all out. And I can tell you that that plate is no longer there. And probably the best way to get a better look at it is to actually open up the bag. Alrighty, there we go. 
you can see that the plate was actually in this area here and it was sort of screwed under that screw. If we go back to the uh, original picture that we took, yeah, it was definitely screwed uh, and it had a section of plate there and it came down like that. Uh, but you can see that plate has completely dissolved. Uh, not sure how it goes about generating that power, whether or not it's a reaction between that plate and the uh, plate that dissolved. I'm not really sure. Now also I have tested this with urine. I didn't film any of that. I don't think anybody wanted to see that. Uh, but it is a great substitute for the salt and water. And I can confirm that it works without actually adding any salt. Now this is a great option in a survival situation. As long as you are fully hydrated, you can activate this without wasting any of your drinking water or any extra salt. And finally, I think these are a great addition to any bug out bag or survival kit. The fact that you can get six full days of light out of this thing is actually amazing. And if you only used it for four hours a night, it would last 36 days. Now that's pretty cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Cheers. G'day guys, Pete here. Today we're camping on the old World War II McDonald airstrip. It's around 200 kilometers from Darwin. It's now abandoned, but you can come and camp here. Uh, and we thought this might be a great time to use this emergency salt water light. No, you fucker. <laughs> See the size of that thing? No. <laughs> So other people that might find my reviews interesting, uh, please let them know about my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I've got another video coming up real soon.